What is good? We're back. Still missing a leg of the tripod. Uh, we previously recorded this screen for this episode because we all couldn't be together. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, we couldn't couldn't be together. Uh, when didn't work out for us. But we wanted to get this out before the actual draft happens. So Jay Wayne, how you doing? I'm doing fantastic. I got the double vax knocked out of the way, so feeling good. Right, next time I see you, I'm kissing you on the lips. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Yeah, I'm bringing you in. He's gonna kiss you. <laughs> You're gonna hear someone else say that. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a rookie superflex tight end premium mock to to go over here. And what, like I said, we were sitting on this uh, for a minute here. Uh, we were trying to get all three of us together when we actually did the draft. We couldn't get all three of us together to record it live. Thought we would have some time. It just hasn't quite worked out. Mako had to drive to Myrtle Beach, get himself another work truck. Myrtle Beach. <laughs> I haven't been to Myrtle Beach. Oh, big company. That's the (laughs) big company. That's the best place to uh, go if you're underage. But once you're overage, there's no reason to go to Myrtle Beach. Well, unless you just want to black out and just do some wild hot shit and not give a fucking. Whatever uh, stays in Myrtle Beach. like Don't go to Myrtle Beach. Come come down to Charleston. And play mini golf. If while. you're a golfer, I guess I get it. But well, you can come to Charleston and play golf. I mean, right. whatever. I mean, right. That's what I, m- my buddies from home before they knew any better. I was like, y'all just need to drive another hour and a half, just past that trash, and come into Charleston. Unless and- it's Bike Week, then then drive around, check out the sights. I mean, that's that's <laughs> just, just carve out a few hours and then roll and out. Get out of there. Yeah, don't get yeah. out of the car. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> especially during COVID. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so we're going to be doing a lot more of these. But like I said, we were sitting on this one and figured we should get it out. We wanted to get it out pre-draft. Obviously, this stuff is all going to change or at least somewhat change when we know some landing spots. Um, and some of that we- will matter to me more than it should. And some of it won't matter because I like the player and and I try not to get too caught up in the landing spot, although it's it's hard yeah. not to. But we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it as it goes on. Um, as we get further down the list here, we did things a little differently this year. We didn't go super deep on the fringer, fringiest players here. So there's a couple of guys on this list that we didn't, uh, we haven't fully gotten to. And I'm just, I'll just be straight up and tell you that I don't know a whole lot about them. I'm going to let the NFL draft dictate whether I need to know a whole lot about them. Um, and also a reason why, you know, I'm not an advocate for drafts before you know, right after the draft or whatever, give give everybody some time. You know, this is a a fun part. Enjoy, let it breathe. So without further ado, uh, let's uh, adieu. Let's let's well, and real quick. Hey, make sure you hit that subscribe button and notification bell bell so that, you know, once, once this draft happens, we're going to be mocking it up till the cows come home. And uh, so you won't want to miss out on that. And just like that, it is officially mock it up before you fuck it up season. Now, this used to be a one podcast event. It's going to be all motherfucking off season long. <laughs> Let's go. We will do our traditional mock it up before you fuck it up, but we're going to do a lot of mock drafts. So like uh, Jason said, be sure to like subscribe so you can follow along. And we are underway and it is not taking any time. Again, this is super flex tight end premium Trevor Lawrence and Justin Fields. Boom, boom, right off the board. Obviously, no argument with Trevor Lawrence. Not really any argument with Justin Fields there. Um, no, nah, I'm taking t- Justin Fields. I'm with J. Mike check right there. And number two, I'm on Justin Fields. Yeah. So you, you just saw Zach Wilson go off the board here. Um, you know, it, to me, it's going to be which one of these, what the number two pick is going to for super flex for the quarterback is going to hinge on who the Niners select. Uh, unless who's, it's Mac, who's unless going it's to Mac Jones. Oh yeah. You're not taking Mac Jones at one, two, if he's not at one, Mac. two, if he goes to the Niners, I'll, you know, that may look back and say, what an idiot. And I, you know, I think he will be just fine in that system and maybe they really do want him. Uh, seems like a lot of smoke screen, but who knows the odds keep changing in Vegas. And that's usually what I pay attention to went from Justin Fields. Now it's back to Mac Jones. Um, I'm going Justin Fields. I'm feeling Trey Lance. I can't Um, argue with Trey Lance. I just, Justin Fields has put so much good stuff down on the field and he can make all the throws and he's athletic and can scramble. And, you know, there's questions about his work ethic. You know, his coach said he's, he's miles beyond wherever Dwayne has. There's some people have questions about his work ethic. There's not actually a question about his work. Like, I don't, you know, I don't know. 
Maybe that's whoever's at four. Maybe that's the Falcons putting that out there, trying to get him to fall to four to him or something. Yeah. So, I mean, Trey Lance there goes off at one, four. That's pretty so standard for four quarterbacks to run. One, off two, the board. three, four. Um, now I could, I could, I could oh, see five no, first non quarterback. So we got Najee Harris here, which I mean, I'm never going to be upset about that. Uh, if you wanted to take them, if, if you don't like the landing spots of some of these other quarterbacks, fine. Uh, just to go, go back to, to one, two, like I'm probably not taking Zach Wilson. If one of the, if Lancer fields lands at the Niners at one, two, um, if not, you know, I'm fine with taking Zach Wilson, I guess. But if fields, let's say drops for some reason and lands in Denver or they trade up and get him, like I, a lot of weapons there. And I really like that. So, you know, like I said, so, some stuff is going to hinge on landing spots here. So, you know, and super flex, a lot of times there is going to be, you know, a bunch of quarterbacks going off the board and Mac Jones is typically the odd man out in the quarterback situation here. Um, and Najee could be between those guys. And if you really need a running back, maybe trade back a pick or two and, and, and get Najee if you're in the one, two seat, cause that's a great dr- seat to be in. Uh, if you're Absolutely. at the one, one, you should take Trevor Lawrence. Yeah. You can't, you can't let, you can't not take Trevor Lawrence at one, one, or if, or if you're, you know, I mean, I'm not going to be upset about taking Jamar chase. Um, either really if, i mean not but, a one one but either. no 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 i'm saying like if you're in that one two seat and you want to trade back and take jamar chase i'm not going to be upset about that we're a running back forward podcast here so you know i'm i'm going to advocate for Najee harris and and travis etn uh we saw go Najee tigers. harris go off the board at one five we saw kyle pitts now this is tight end premium go off the board at one six and then i'm up at one seven and i took etn over jamar chase some people are going to say I'm stupid. I think Travis Etienne's getting hated on for being good for too long. Essentially, we've we've got a whole podcast out about or a, a segment of a podcast with Angelo Fantasy talking about Travis Etienne. You know, I'm not gonna not gonna be upset either way. I'd be fine with taking Jamar Chase there. Seems like you're definitely not fucking it up by taking Jamar Chase there. But I'm gonna sh- I'm gonna shoot my shots on running backs, and I think Travis Etienne is special. And I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and take that guy. Um, he's a make your play in one day and he proved that he can be a pass catcher. Um, and I think yeah, he, zero questions about that man's off the field character or work ethic and anything like that. He's just a, he's a stud and you can't miss. I mean, I got Clemson paraphernalia everywhere. I went to Clemson. Yeah. go Tigers, but so great co couldn't make Big the co. podcast. He couldn't make the actual draft first auto pick off the board. Uh, ah. He takes from our chase. He had one know. thing to do. Click a button on your phone, Big co. <laughs> Too much to ask, but he said, he, he said, takes, I couldn't get a, I couldn't get a heads up. Like you got a text. You got all the heads ups. You got notifications. Uh, so, so Jamar chase, easy layup for an auto pick there, regardless if it was an auto pick, that's probably Great auto pick. pick. Yeah. Uh, and then JMW here gets gifted uh, the Mac Jones pick. And if he goes to the Niners, I think that's a great pick. He's, he he's won't got, make it to one nine. If he's, if he's a Niners guy, he, he's got all the stuff upstairs and he had all, you know, he, he has the talent to Sark, Sark has a kind of a similar system to what Shanahan likes to do, what he wants to do, move guys around. So I get it. He could be the, the, con, you know, Mac Jones could be the controller of that Shanahan offense and give him what he needs from a cerebral uh, point. Uh, but I don't know why you would trade all the way up to one, three to take Mac Jones. It seems like you could have, you know, probably dealt yourself a little bit further back. But as we're going into this process, there's more and more people saying that they think he is the third quarterback in this draft. So I don't know. Um, and then, you know, so you're up there at 110, Jay Wayne. What'd you what'd you do? Yeah, I struggled. I didn't know. I was like, I didn't think I'd be faced with Devontae or Javante. Uh, that's basically who I was. And and I don't know. Did I blow it? I took Devontae. Should I have taken the running back? We are running back show. I feel I felt weird taking Devontae. I just didn't want to miss out on who I think is a really special, special talent. Like the way that guy moves and the way he gets open and, and just the work that he did at Alabama day in and day out. It's just incredible. And, I, and it's nothing against Javante Williams. I think he's could be a really good player. I don't think he's special, uh, but I just I don't know. I couldn't decide. It was a two-minute clock. I was like, ah, I feel like I'm not messing it up taking Devonta Smith. Probably not messing it up taking Javante. Devonta. Devonta Smith. Mm, my bad. My bad. Uh, what, what, what would you have done there? Would you have taken? Javante? I'm fine with taking Devonta Smith there. I, I like Javante Williams. I'm not. I'm not as in as everybody else is. Michael Carter was in that same system and put up very similar numbers. Uh, just Javante Williams is built more like a traditional guy that you like. And hey, I like the tape for Javante Williams. I'm not hating. It is. It's um, phenomenal. But, but like like Devonta Antonio Smith Gibson, is, he didn't have very many carries. You know, he did have more than Antonio Gibson. And Antonio Gibson is a great argument against that theory uh, right. because he came in and did work, but. Not a ton of like, not a bunch of workhorse numbers 
you know, to, but to look at. I'm never going to be mad at taking Devonta Smith now, you know, uh, this, this week, they got him on the scale and he only weighed 166. Like how much did you think he was going to weigh? What are we doing? We're he's fine. He's an outlier. You don't want to bet on him. Don't bet on him. I'm going to bet on him. I think he's great. Um, right. I think, I think he's going to figure it out now. It's going to be like, we talk about all the time. It's going to be on the team that drafts him to not just be like, Hey, we're going to stick him out wide and just make him be a solely out wide receiver and do outside receiver stuff. Like Sark gave you the blueprint of how to use him and how to, how he can be the best receiver in the nation. Now, Jalen Waddle was really good and got hurt too, but won the damn Heisman gave you the blueprint. So don't just draft him and, and play with ego as far as the coach goes, you know, the, the, the blueprint of how to use him is out there properly. And, and I think this guy's just going to get better and he just works hard. He has everything you want. He's got strong hands. Uh, he's got, as Angelo said, the best curvier linear movement uh, going. And uh, so I, I'm not upset about that drink at all. To that shit. Drink to that. Uh, so then that was 110, 111. We got Javonta Williams uh, going off the board. That's Great strong pick. value there. I mean, yep. super flex, the end of the first round and super flex Fantastic. top of the second great value going on there. Uh, so if you're in that spot, that's great. Uh, Jalen Waddle Jaylen then Waddell. at, at, at one twelve. Sure. I mean, he I, I could, could you argue, argue Jalen Waddle over Devonta Smith when he was out on the field, you know, they were neck and neck. He had, you know, a ridiculous, he had like 13 less catches and 75 more yards or less yards. So like, Jalen Waddle just is, is an absolute freak too, but also a little bit of an outlier if you look at it from the metric standpoint. So not upset about that. And then you have Bateman at 2-1. How do you feel about that? It's too early for me, I think, man. I think I got to take Rondell Moore over Bateman. I really? Could, I could easily see taking Terrace Marshall over Bateman at this point. Terrace. Um, that's what I said. I know you Terrace. did say. I was just reiterating it yeah. for... Uh, it's not Terrence. You won't find Terrence Marshall uh, if you're searching for for stats and stuff. Um, I mean, shit, depending on where Chuba lands, man, I could rise that guy up. I'm going to get a thumbs down for that comment, but whatever. Oh, we're Suck getting it. there. We're getting there. You're yeah. Jumping uh, the shark a little, but it's already you know, on the screen. I would slide Bateman down a little bit into that second round if it was me. Okay. I'm I'm fine with Bateman in that area there. Two one, uh, you know. I just feel like you're I'm not, not mad at you. Not, I just yeah. wouldn't do it. I, I, I feel like he's more. he's still very solid. Didn't test like you wanted him to necessarily. Smaller than you like thought he, he was. To. Shorter than but you thought fine. he was. I mean, it still fits into the profile of kind of the player that he is. Basically, um, the same and, size guy as Kadarius Tony. Yeah, just just much different player, but yeah, but I you know I I think Rashad Bateman, like we said when we initially uh, did the video on him. I just think you're not fucking it up by taking him and he he's he's gonna he's gonna perform for you uh kind of regardless but uh, I I do like Terrace Marshall a good bit uh so that was one thing that I, we tweeted out at one point like t Terrence Terrace over over Bateman question mark uh, so that'll be interesting to see what that happens now any of those guys go to the Ravens and immediately we're off of those guys so again see, uh, we got to see how this kind of pans Ravens, out and take someone I don't like take Bateman, and maybe please take me <laughs> maybe it's a maybe it's a Josh Allen situation where you know they get a guy and it really improves the whole team and improves the quarterback play and 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 you know Diggs is the number one receiver in the league and all that kind of stuff but who knows so then Rondell Moore at 2-2 not upset about that at all just Love has to stay guy. healthy and get in the right system. And that, that guy's fantastic. So that's good second round value. Then we have Pat Fryermuth at two, three. So that's probably the first reach of the draft that I could say, uh, I mean, tight end premium. So you got to do what you got to do, but, and Pat's a big, big, huge uh, wide receiver playing tight end out there, but he can do some of the tight end things. Uh, there was back in the, when he played uh, Ohio state, he had, he had some good tape against chase young. Um, you know, I probably a reach there. Uh, probably wouldn't take him. He's got to slide down a little bit for me. Uh, St. Brown goes next at two, four. Got to take Terrace Marshall over him. Probably taking Kadarius, Tony and Tylen Wallace and all these running backs over him as well. Uh, probably. So. I haven't finished everything that I want to look into with St. Brown. There is a lot to like about him. Um, five star recruit, pretty good with the ball in the air, pretty refined route runner, you know, athletic family. You could knock him because of equ equanimous, you know, that man didn't want, maybe he should have stretched him more, you know, <laughs> uh, it just seems like he just dropped. He just, he can't cut it. So you could knock him for that. I, I, I'm interested, but I'm with you. I got to take Terrace, Tylen, Kadarius, <laughs> probably definitely Chuba and probably Gainwell, Trey Sermon, Michael Carter over, over him. I'm with you. Yeah. 
So Terrace Marshall's next. We both love that. I think that's great value there. Great value. Agreed there. Yeah. Trey Sermon uh, over uh, Chuba and Gainwell. And uh, when we asked Zach about that, these are a couple, a couple of our patrons in this draft as well. Uh, he, Matt Waldman is really patient. high on Trey Sermon. Um, so he was sticking with Waldman there, which, you know, Hey, if Trey Sermon was, was coming into this healthy and didn't have some health concerns throughout his career, uh, we've been burned by that a little bit here, uh, but Trey Sermon could easily be in that spot. And I think he's probably going to end up being a little later and being a great value here. I don't know if it's necessarily the best value, but I'm not really like, how could you take him? I, I'm probably taking Chuba Gainwell. Definitely taking Chuba. Uh, probably going to take a chance on Michael Carter over over Sermon. Uh, and, and I'm kind of hoping that Sermon falls in the late second of or mid second of regular drafts. Uh, like not super flex drafts. So I think you're probably going to see him get pushed down the NFL draft. If I had to guess because of medical so? concerns, there's no mm. reason for anyone They're They're not already getting good value on guys in the third and fourth round. There's no yeah, reason running backs have to, been... to force it. And so I could see him falling and, and, you know, you lose that draft capital. I could see Michael Carter easily getting drafted uh, over him as a, as a more st- safe yeah, I mean, I think, I think Gainwell, kind of and Tony Gainwell. and Tylen are all going to get drafted over him. Uh, yeah, not that I, that means everything. I really like Trace. Healthy Trace Sermon is a fucking monster. Yeah, I just dude is like a beast. I hope he become like I just want him to be the value running back, and right. then I'm gonna have so much Trace Sermon. I don't want him to have to be the guy that I have to maybe reach a hair. And it's like I said, it's not even a reach if he's if he's doesn't have a couple of red flags uh, injury wise. Um, so then. I'm up next. I take Chuba Hubbard. It was a toss up between him and Gainwell. I could easily take Gainwell over Chuba Hubbard with just really? the passing game, just the passing game chops. And if he lands in the right spot, like we talked about on with Angelo in, in, a, in a video that we have up, uh, if Gainwell lands in the right spot, he's just an A plus receiver. He's got all sorts of uh, tricks in his bag. I think he's just a great athlete. Uh, really didn't didn't play this year, but. Uh, I ended up going with Chuba. I think Chuba's just being pushed down a little too far. I, I'm I'm going to take uh, Chuba as probably the the RB four in a lot of cases, and Gainwell will be right there. Um, and like you said, like we just argued, Sermon could obviously be there, but uh, probably going to push him down a little bit and hope that he just by value wise and by perception wise ends up getting pushed down, so I can maybe trade back up and get both of them. Um, but Chuba, I ended up taking Chuba there. That's a home Chuba. run hitter. And and he's probably, yeah. Will he be in a committee? Probably so. But I don't think it matters to me. He could land in the right spot. Probably going to end up being a little bit later of a pick than he would have been. Definitely going to end up being a pick than, than he would have been and could end up in a really good situation. I'm, I'm still in on Chuba Hubbard. I'm not out on Chuba Hubbard. Absolutely. Uh, so. Then Big Co takes Kenneth Gainwell, which I think that was the pick. Um, I, like I said, I could have easily taken two, but he's not here. He did he's make gonna, that pick. That wasn't an auto draft. Yeah. He he's going to just tell you about how great of a pass catcher he is and how an athlete he was. Uh, so that's, that's going to be his pick. Uh, Kadarius, Tony next off the board, sniped right in front of me, right in front of you. So would you have taken Kadarius if he was there? Yeah, I would. I want, I was hoping Kadarius You're, would fall. He got, you know, JM dub got me twice with Mac Jones and Kadarius, Tony, who I was, gonna take as a, as a pretty no-brainer pick for me in my eyes and then i had the decision to make uh at their at 210 but basically between tylen walsh and michael carter i was like not sure uh who who i wanted i, I i'm taking tylen over over those other running uh, wide receivers left that you can see but i didn't know whether i wanted to take him over michael carter or not yeah that and was I, the question i was going to ask you when you were finished up are you taking him over michael carter i feel like that might might should have been a a four run stretch of running backs uh, maybe yeah. I, I think I, I think I could take Michael Carter over those two guys landing spot. We'll see. Um, yeah, I, I, I need to I need to re back up on Michael Carter. It's been so long since we watched him. And, and when, I think that's great value on uh, Carter. Oh, yeah. It's it, when he as soon as I made the pick urban Bobcat, my man, Travis, shout out, Travis. Uh, he's a, he's a he's an awesome videographer. He's been I should be his patron. Um, but, uh, he, you know, he snapped, took Michael Carter as soon as I took. Uh, Talon Wallace and I was like, ah, I should have taken Michael Carter. I don't know. I'm a, this is a running back show. I want the running backs, and I just took two wide receivers instead of the running back. Uh, <laughs> not practicing what I preach, but it was a two minute clock, and and Tylen, as much shade as I tried to at least throw to not just go all gung ho for Tylen, he still is a pretty phenomenal player. Like he he he, 
I don't know. Yeah, he's going to have he's, he's going to have draft capital on him, too. He, he's a good he's a good player. And, and I feel like a, a safe, a safe pick. And I think Tony and, and Kadarius are going to have and uh, are going to have uh, or Tylan and, and Kadarius are going to have pretty decent draft capital on him. And whereas Michael Tony, Carter is going to probably get pushed a little bit, maybe. Sure, sure. And, and I would take Tony over Tylan just because of the ceiling. Uh, but once Tony's gone, then and then I'm willing to take uh, Tylan Wallace there. And then I think it was a great pick with Michael Carter coming up after that. Yeah. All right. So Michael Carter next. We talked about that a little bit. Jamar Jefferson there, who was kind of everybody's darling, but has since faded a little bit in the in this running back class. Uh, he he grabs Adam, him at, at two twelve. Yeah. Um, as soon as he weighed in and, and did did all the measurables, they were they were not as excited about Jamar Jefferson. And could be some good value as a as a as a decent late round pick there. I think that's where he'll end up, and then. Uh, so we're now we're into the third round. Diami Brown goes off the board at three one. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, I don't I haven't gotten super deep into him. He was like I said, we left some of these fr like fringier players, and we'll see where he ends up going. And maybe he isn't a fringe player, but fringe as far as ranking dynasty wise, uh, left them off from really getting in there. And but he he has some good tape. He has some fun stuff there. So out of UNC, so I'm not upset about that. Uh, but I would take the next pick, which is three, two is Elijah Moore. Um, I would take him over Brown uh, right now from the little I know about Brown and the decent amount I know about Moore. Uh, I would, I would definitely do that. Uh, so then there's three, three uh, Demetric Felton from out of UCLA. Uh, that's probably a reach right there. Um, I'd probably drop him maybe not even in this round, uh, but could be completely wrong about that. Yeah, uh, I, hate to, I hate to knock a guy strictly on his measurables, but how is a 5'8", 189-pound guy who ran a really slow 40 and, a, and and is not very strong and is not very agile and doesn't have any burst? It's like, how's this guy going to win? You know, I'm not I'm not exactly sure. Yeah, I, not, I don't know a ton about him. I watched him UCLA, but that's it's not great. I probably would drop him back a good bit. I think um, the guy out of... Um, What's his name? Elijah. Um, Elijah Mitchell. Elijah Mitchell. Yeah, thank you. I think he. I think if you want to take yet. another running back, I think that would be the guy you want to take. And I could or, see or him. Or Kylan Hill. I mean, I, or, if you or want to Kylan take Hill. Kylan Hill next, yeah. that would be. You know, I'd take Kylan Hill and Elijah Mitchell over. You know, after Michael Carter, those would be my next running backs. Yeah, I, um, I have. I have to agree with you. And I would. You know, after Elijah Moore is gone, then I'm probably trying to take those two two running backs, Kylan Hill and Elijah Mitchell. You know, there's a lot to like about both of those guys all around, whether you're a metrics guy or an analytics guy or a film guy, um, they all, it all jives decently well. Yeah. And, and they're interesting players and, and you can't miss here in the third round taking guys like those. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred agree. A hundred percent. Uh, Brevin Jordan, he was, uh, the, the number one tight end prospect, I think in 2018 out of the U here, uh, he's, he went to Bishop Gorman. So that's, if you know anything about high school football, that's a huge program. Um, I think, I, he could easily be that guy could be the the tight end too, uh, but Your maybe it's Fryermuth. I don't really know, um, so I can't really speak too much on those. The tight ends are typically like the last thing that that I really evaluate. Obviously, Kyle Pitts is on a whole other level, so he jumped right he into even our, a tight end everything. So, uh, but I, I can't really get super into it. Uh, but we're gonna keep it moving. We got Jamie Newman coming next off the board. Who's a little bit of a question mark. He spent some time at wake forest. He threw the ball to Sage Surratt a good bit. Uh, he was okay. Uh, then he transferred to UGA didn't play. So kind of a mystery guy here. I'd probably take some of these other quarterbacks over him, but you know, from what I read about him, you know, some people do like the traits and that he could be, end up being a late day three steal in a couple of, uh, months here or a couple of years from now. Um, so then we have uh, Seth Williams out of Auburn, a uh, little bit bigger prototypical uh, wide receiver look like a OG kind of what you want to see from receivers. There's a lot Six, of three to 11 seems to be a lot of the slot guys in this draft where this guy's a little bit more of your prototypical guy and people like the third round swing in regular drafts. So the third round swing in a, um, in a super flex. I don't know how they feel about that. I, I haven't made my mind up on Seth Williams. We'll see where he ends up and see what huge, rounds he gets taken in huge wingspan, arm length, hand size, yeah. decent for just seems like burst. you were saying with the third round shot on, you can't be upset about that. Like he seems like a great third round shot uh, because he does have those things. 
Um, so then I'm up again. I take Hunter Long here, which is a tight end at a Boston College. I think he could easily, he's a great wide receiver as far as the tight end position goes, not the best blocker. When I was researching Kyle Pitts, the reason he popped up on my radar, he's on a lot of the PFF uh, receiving statistics and and things that stand out where I was looking at Pitts and Hunter Long just kept popping up there. So I dug, dug into him a little bit. And I, I think he, for me, I think he could easily be the tight end too in this class. He's got some stuff to work on, but as far as receiver goes, I think he's a really strong receiver. Uh, but I, if I had to redo this again, I would take Kylan Hill in that position. Uh, two minute clock. I got to the end of it. We were chit chatting a lot and uh, you know, tight end premium might've got a little excited, but I would, I would replace that pick with Kylan Hill. Me and JMW uh, think a lot alike in a lot of drafts. We've been doing a lot of mocks on our discord and he ends up taking Kylan Hill two picks later, but then big co comes in, takes Kellen Mond. Um, we'll, we'll circle back on this quarterback conversation after we're over uh, with this, with the picks here. Uh, then JMW takes Kylan Hill, which I really like Kylan Hill. You were saying how, Kylan Hill and, and um, Elijah Mitchell uh, Mitchell were your next two off the board. I agree with that a hundred percent after Carter. Um, I think Kylan Hill's just got a little bit of everything that you like to see out of a running back. And I think he's going to be one of my favorite swings to put on a team former running back uh, standpoint. And then you're up Jay Wayne. What did you do? I wanted to take Elijah Mitchell. I was about to just take him, and then I scrolled down the sleeper app, and this is a two quarterback, you know, this is super flex. So saw Kyle trash there and I was like, how can you, how can you go wrong taking a swing on a quarterback in the third round of a super flex draft to, you know, there's some talk he goes in the first round. I don't think he probably will, but you know, if he did, then this is fantastic value. You could flip him already immediately for some sort of profit. Um, part of me wants to take Trask over Mond and, and tell <laughs> big co he's dumb for taking Mond, which, which I did say in the, in the draft, I was like, oh, Mon sucks. And Big Co was like, well, if Jay Wayne thinks that, then he's guaranteed to be good in fantasy. And I was like, touche, <laughs> touche. Um, I just know from watching a decent amount of Kellen Mon because Texas A&M and Clemson played some games to get uh, against each other over the years. I always felt comfortable against Texas A&M knowing that Kellen Mon was, was going to either blow it or not be able to pull them through. He just always... He just couldn't, he just couldn't, he didn't seem like a winner. He didn't have like that killer instinct at the end. And I, he always just blew it. And I just always felt great knowing that yeah. Coach get his W. Um, but, you know, he can run. So that's what Big Coach said. Just run, Bo. And I was like, you're right, mm -hmm. man. Like, look at Jalen Hurts. He's a fucking third round startup pick now in super flex drafts, which I'm not going to do. But like, that's where he is. And if you had him, if you took him in the third round last year, you could sell him for a ton of profit. So yeah. can't be mad at Kellen mm -mm. And, uh, you know, I could have easily taken uh, Elijah Mitchell here, but just took a quarterback because it's a super flex. Super flex. Sure. I like those, that strategy in the third round, if there's someone sticking around, uh, then we're going to finish this thing out. I'll circle back and tell you my opinion on some, on these later quarterbacks here. Sage Surratt out of Wake Forest, uh, bigger receiver, Seemed like he was kind of slow. Uh, don't know a ton Four about seven. him. Um, so we'll see where he ends up. I know there was a comparison to JG Arthega Whiteside. Um, and then to finish this draft up, which I'm really excited that this guy got drafted here and we can drop his name, Dwayne Eskridge out of Western Michigan. Uh, I'd probably throw him up uh, a lot higher in this round. Uh, and I really like the prospect there. Hasn't been playing the receiver position long, was a corner, switched over um, and just, you know, kind of lit it up and, and just does a lot of really good things, but he falls into that category of being a slot guy. A lot of slot guys in this uh, draft, both big and small. Uh, so I really like Dwayne Eskridge. Hopefully he ends up on uh, on a lot of my teams. All right. So back real, to the quarterback well, thing. Go ahead. Real quick, just before we get into that, uh, I have a couple honorable mentions or do you want to save that? I can just, mm. I can just go with these honorable mentions of guys. No, hit, him, hit me with them. Hit me. Didn't, the guys I'd be targeting, you know, if we were to go into the fourth round of this thing, I think Amari Rogers, I got to give my boy a shout sure. out. Um, he having, easily could have been here. Yeah. Right. I think a lot of yeah. not, not enough love. There's there's some good stuff there. I've seen right, some people recently hopping on the train late. Well, let me just tell you this. I was talking to my buddy Josh, you know, who's who's a big, you know, he's lived in Clemson his whole life and followed those, followed the Tigers, and and we talk a lot of football and college football. And I was like, Amari Rogers is the best slot receiver <laughs> ever to come out of Clemson, right? And he was like, and I tried to name him off. I was like, who else besides these guys? Right. There's Adam Humphreys, we had Hunter Renfro, right? which was a beast. We had, um, who else am I missing here? Oh, uh, uh Adam, somebody from Scott. the 89 team is like, but we had, yeah, 
Yeah. Got it too good. Adam Scott or uh, 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 Scott. Artavis Scott, he he yeah. got some t- some run with the Chargers, couldn't get healthy and stay healthy. But you know all those, and you, you guys know what Hunter Renfro and Adam Humphreys have done in the NFL. Amari Rodgers is better than those guys. Like he's more athletic. He can stretch the field down downfield. He's good after the catch. He's had a bad worker. injury that really that that a knee injury that right that derailed. So but really, he could have been yeah. But he the seal you know I think he would be more of a household name if and it if took that him it took him a year to get back right and then the next season he came out as a senior and really just, just was the was the man for you guys this year. Where as I feel like if he could have stayed healthy and been out there with. Justin Ross and right. uh, T Higgins really would have been a problem. Right. So and, and I think, I think I can't wait to take him Healthy Rogers. and been out there with those guys. I think he can be, he could be a PPR, you know, solid player for you in, in those type of leagues. Um, Tamarion Terry out of uh, Florida mm-hmm. state is another big. Yeah. Nico guy. Collins. Um, Ramondre Stevenson, right? He's a running back that, that didn't get popped. I'm, I'm surprised he didn't get drafted here in the third round. Um, but that's another guy that, that's interesting anyway and to keep your eye on. And um, I guess JV and Hawkins is another guy that gets 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 some run in the in the third round. I'm I'm more of an Elijah Mitchell guy, but yeah. Anyway, uh, you want to yeah. get into the quarterback? No, I just want to circle back and give you my kind of opinion on him here. Um, I'd, I'd I'd probably Jamie Newman. I'd probably drop out of this conversation. Um, uh, I think at, at first I was kind of against Kellamon cause I was kind of with you. And then I started listening to some other people he Then I you know, went back and watch it, but he's, he does have all the tools. He's just never quite put it all together. He has the crazy athletic ability, he has the arm and he played, you know, he's played good in stretches. Um, so I just think, and, and, you know, he, he, he didn't have, have a whole, tools. He didn't, didn't the, have a whole lot of talent just, around him necessarily this season. Um, but, He's you know, scary he's, to he's, look at, you know, if he's on the other side. They were side, right he, there. They were right there in a lot of games and, and right there in the college football playoff deal uh, for for a while. And, I, you know, as far as fantasy goes, I think Kellen Mond has to be the first guy on the uh, on the third round of quarterbacks that you take for me. Uh, and then I'd probably take Trask. And, I, you know, when we were doing this draft, I, I had a little bit different order, but I've had a little bit more time to think about it. Uh, I'd probably go Trask, and then I'd probably take Davis Mills over uh, Jamie Newman, the guy out of Stanford, who you know, has apparently has all the tools and, and the ability, but is just a shot in the dark in the th- late third, fourth round of uh, Superflex, along with Jamie Newman. Uh, but Kellamon, I think I think he's going to end up being a little bit drafted higher than I think maybe we think as well in the real draft, uh, right? Because there are some raw parts and pieces there and 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 he got he continued to at least get better which is what you like to see whereas he was so reliant on the athletic ability and then just started to hone his craft in a little bit and uh, you know be interesting if he gets the, the right guys to hone his craft but i think kyle trask is interesting he's old probably has a decent ceiling uh but just watching tony and pitts man he's he's accurate which, you know, can count for something. And, yeah, and how that, bad has the Florida offense been forever? Well, that's exactly where I was just about to go. Like, I mean, it, they, they came to life with him at the helm, a guy who hadn't played, you know, since like high school uh, and and came in there and 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 did his thing. So I uh, just wanted to circle back on that. So anything else to add or you want to get out of here? No, nah, I think I've gotten everything off my chest that I needed to. <laughs> All right. Well, like we said earlier, like we're going to spend some more time on these drafts. We just wanted to and get more involved in these players and the hows and whys and where to trade and all those kind of things as we move forward in the season here. But we wanted to do a little bit quicker, uh, not spend a whole lot of time, kind of ch- keep it live ish and, uh, and and just, you know, see where we are and see where we end up. It was, was kind of where we wanted to do here and get the ball rolling with some mocks. So we appreciate you all hanging with us. Hopefully you made it to the end. And we'll, uh, we'll see you next time after the draft. We'll be talking probably another mock. So, peace. We need your immediate reaction after the draft. <laughs> Give me a second. Let it breathe. Don't start your rookie draft so soon. Thanks for joining us. Let me get a five-star review. Thumbs up. Comment. Peace. <laughs> <laughs>